This week, we've been focusing on the promises and pitfalls of artificial intelligence. Despite the issues around deep fakes and cheating on essays, they do hold tremendous promises across all fields of science, including weather forecasting, which is one thing our science and climate expert, Darius Madavi, knows very well. Before we get into, into, into AI, Darius, easy for me to say, I think even the weather models you show us every day can be a bit of a mystery. How do they actually work? Yes, uh, great question. So whether you're a human or a supercomputer or an artificial intelligence, you need to start your forecast from the same place. So to know where you're going, you've got to know where you've been. So we start with an analysis of the current conditions. We use data from weather stations and buoys and satellites. And with all of that together, we can know, uh, have a current analysis of what's, what it's looking like right now. Now, traditional models, uh, also known as uh, numerical weather prediction models, take those current conditions and then they use some really complicated math to simulate real world physics and then run that forward over however many hours. As you might imagine, that's quite resource intensive, which is why it takes an array of supercomputers hours to put out a forecast. But AI models, on the other hand, are basically mimics. They've been trained on decades of climate data and modeling, and instead of trying to predict the future by rigidly applying the laws of physics, they do it based on how similar setups have played out in the past. And even though training them takes a, con a ton of computing power, once they're ready, you can run them on your laptop and get a forecast in minutes. So they start from the same place, but they differ a lot in between. How do the results actually compare? Uh, honestly, the accuracy is shockingly similar. And uh, according to experts, that's a testament to how quickly the technology has developed. It's amazing that they can mimic what the traditional models do. And, and nearly all of that is really over the last year, the technology has, has come on in leaps and bounds. If you and I had this conversation a year ago, I would probably said that's not possible. And suddenly here we are today and it is. <laughs> so that was the director of U of T School of the Environment and a professor of computer science, which shows you just how important these models are nowadays. Now, some of the claims from these AI companies might be a little bit overblown, but in most cases, including extreme weather like heat waves or hurricanes, they do seem to be at least as good. But instead of telling, let me show. You can see here uh, a comparison between uh, the uh, traditional model and an AI-based model. And so this is the temperature and wind direction forecast over the next few days from both of those models. Uh, on the top, we had that traditional model. And in the bottom, uh, we had a, an AI-based model from uh, Google's DeepMind. Uh, and now this is something, the uh, top one there is something I often show during a forecast. I use the European model all the time. And you can see how much, uh, how well the uh, AI model compensates. But one thing you might notice, or compare, sorry. Uh, but one Thing you might notice is that the forecast from the AI model doesn't give quite as much detail, and that's because of the data it's trained on. Now, mm -hmm. the only real limitation for how fine-grained a traditional model can be is how much computing power you have, because it's just running the physics. But for an AI-based model, it really comes down to the resolution of the training data, and that's a lot harder to improve. So out of all of this, are you going to be replaced by AI? And for the record, don't go yet, okay? Oh, thank you, Dan. First of all, don't worry. Does AI have a face like this? <laughs> Yes, it can, thanks to deep fakes. It can also pick a much better one. Uh, but seriously, this is really only another tool in Forecaster's arsenal. Now, as any meteorologist will tell you, there's a big difference between the output of a model and a proper forecast, which is why even though traditional models are freely available online, I'm still here. Uh, now, to, not to mention, uh, especially with our changing climate, it's gonna be more important than ever to have people interpreting the results of those models. So if you show it a weather condition that's like nothing it's seen in that ERA5 data set, it won't know what to do with it. It, it will make some guess, uh, but I, I, you know the chances are it's gonna be a lot worse than if you take the traditional model and show it that condition and compute forward. But there's still so much promise here, especially if we bring together traditional and AI-based models. So there's a long way to go. Uh, we've come a long way already, uh, but fortunately, no AI can steal my fun facts, Dan. No kidding. Thanks, Darius. Thank you.